Let's generate ores into the world. Let's see how to do that. Forging fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom ore generation to Minecraft, the long awaited custom ore generation. So let's start by going into our mod configured features class and let's copy over some stuff like always of course all of the code is available to you in the description below github repository and individual gist as well and we're going to start right here with the overworld citrine ores which is a list of target block states as well as the citrine ore right here which is the configured feature of ore configuration so what the frick is going on right here so let's start with the citrine ore. this list you can see this list has specific targets so or configuration targets which are the following so in the target we're specifying a certain rule test and then a specific block state so the rule test if we middle mouse button click on this you can see this one is a match test of stone or replaceables hmm, interesting yes so what does this mean this means that if you know a certain block is within this tag then it can be replaced by this block right here in this case, stone can be replaced by citrine ore. That also makes sense because the citrine ore, you know, has the stone texture around it. And then for the deep slate citrine ore, we want to replace deep slate ore replaceables. In this case, which is just the block tag right here of deep slate ore replaceables. So that is very interesting indeed when you think about it. And you can also see, for example, there's netherrack, there's nether ore replaceables as well. So this is the one thing that you would use if you wanted to spawn something in the nether. And then Conversely, you can just do a custom tag, add a new rule test to the class that serves for end stone, and just like that, you can replace certain end stone blocks with your custom end ore in theory. That's literally all that you need to do. I highly recommend. Think about it a little bit. Check this out. Check out the ore features class. Highly recommend, like every single time. It's just a very smart idea to take a look at the vanilla examples that are present, and then you can't go wrong. That is the list right here. What are we doing with this list? Well, then we're basically putting it right here. So you can see it right here in this new ore configuration. The really interesting thing here is the nine. So this is just the vein size. What's very important is that this should not be below, I think two or three, something like that. If we can actually take a look at middle mouse button, click on the ore configuration and then middle mouse button, click again. And then I believe that uh, we should be able to find in the ore features. I think it's the emerald one. So that's 51, uh, line 51. Let's see. Uh, this one has size three. Yeah, size two, I think. Is this the um, actual size two? Yeah, that's uh, ancient debris. Exactly, it's size two. I believe that if you go smaller than two or three, then it gets a little, you know, wonky. It's a little weird. So I highly recommend if you want, you know, smaller ones, choose two or three. Otherwise, it might not work quite well. For the actual vein size but where do we go from here well we go first of all to a new class so in our feature package right click new java class called the mod or placement and for this i will copy over three methods and i will then explain where those are from so those methods right here you can could be like well that's you know just like out, out of nowhere well actually they are from a specific place so i can actually and you can we're just going to search for it, shift twice and then there you go those are all in the or placements class however they're all private and they're just easier to use in this case this is why i made them here in the or placement right here because we're going to basically use those in the placed features class and for this, we're going to once again copy it over, but this is not very complicated at all. This is, of course, once again, mod configured features. There you go. And then you can see we're once again just registering the placement with the placement utils here, the citrine ore. This is this is exactly this configured feature. And then we're making a common ore placement. This right here is the veins per chunk. And then we have a height range placement. So usually in the ore here, we want a placement modifier. And we're going to take a look at uh, some of the examples that are that there are because there are a lot of them and they're really freaking awesome so the height range placement here is right in this case is triangle there's also uniform we also can make you know custom height providers or use some of those custom you know or some of those height providers like the weighted list the uniform height bias to bottom and very bias to bottom you could in theory also make your own height provider that's of course a little more complicated but in this case 
use triangle, you've probably seen the way that 118 works with the, you know, height. So basically what happens is that, you know, the bottom of the triangle is at negative 80, even though that's below the world, that still works. And then the top is at plus 80. And so in theory, what should happen is that the most citrine ore should spawn right around zero. That's the idea of the triangle height range placement. Highly recommend, like always, just play around with this a little bit or, you know, try out the, play, the triangle, play out the uniform, try out some of the height providers here. Trapezoid is the is the actual triangle, as you can see right there. Uniform, weighted list is really freaking cool. You can do, I mean, some amazing stuff there. And I just highly recommend you, that you just try out, that you just are open to experimentation on this, because that's probably going to be the best thing to do. And then we also need to add the generation class here, of course, mod or generation. There you go. And then I will copy over the actual method, which is really, really freaking easy. You can see we're just adding the actual place feature here to the base. Now, in this case, we're actually adding it to every biome that there is, which is totally fine. And then in our mod worlds events here, we want to call this at the very top. That's very important to call this right here. Because when we actually look at this, this is the underground ores generation step, and this is called before the vegetal decoration. So this goes from the top to the bottom. So keep that in mind that you have to call this in the correct order. Otherwise, it's not going to work. But apart from that, that should actually be everything that we need for the custom ore. Like always, like I said, the code is all available in the description below. Get a pass or an individual just as well. Same with some of the vanilla code, right? I just highly recommend middle mouse button, click on some of the stuff, take a look at how this works and how it is done. And then I'm sure that you will create the world generation for your ores just like you want to. And that's just great. So now let's create a new world. And let's see if we can find our ores in Minecraft. Oh, we find ourselves in Minecraft. So let's see and go down here. I believe there it is. So there is some citrine ore already spawning right here. And I believe that there's somewhat more right here. There you go. And there's even more here. Let's go. So as you can see, the citrine ore has spawned in the world. And it's absolutely great. We're at minus 42. So what we would expect is that, you know, a little bit higher, so right around zero should be where it spawns most often. You know, it's sometimes hard to confirm, but overall, I mean, it has started spawning, so that's like the most important thing. So that is pretty cool, and that's how easy it is to add some custom ore generation to Minecraft. Right, once again, I can't stress this enough. Take a look at the vanilla examples as well. They are incredibly important, and they are, well, I mean, they're just very straightforward to basically use. Otherwise, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.